the market will provide for you, but money earned from your own business will set you free. Back in like 1960 something, you know, like, so turns out that this thing that I've always wanted was just in my blood somewhere. Um, cause my dad retired from corporate at 44, you know? Um, so when I told him I was retired from corporate, he's like, wow, you actually beat me. <laughs> I think that's, you know, when I think of like where this all started, I, I think it was just there. Both my, both sets of parents, both sets of grandparents, entrepreneurial. I think my granddad used to own like an aluminum factory. No. So I think it was just always there and, and I had to kind of step into it. Before you spoke to your mom or your dad last year, did you know, even as you were growing up, that there was something there around being an entrepreneur as a teenager and then obviously before you moved to Canada? Was there, were there things that you were already doing at that point in time that pointed to like, yeah, this is what it's going to be like or this is what my future going to look like or ways of trying to figure things out at that point in time? I grew up with parents that were always solving problems and generating revenue, right? Um, so what what happens now was just my normal. My parents started new businesses every year. So I thought that was normal, right? Whether or not it failed or did well, there was a new business every year. And so when I was in my teenage years, I realized like in school that, okay, you know, these kids need lollipops, but they can't get any, you know, especially because there was a boarding side of the school and they, those kids couldn't get lollipops. So I bought a box of lollipops. I brought it to school, started selling them for like a dollar pop, right? Or the equivalent of, and I was like, oh my God, profit. You know, it was the first time I, I, I got it, right? You buy the box for 10 bucks. There's a hundred lollipops in there. You can sell each one for a dollar. 90 bucks in profit, you know? So I learned like three lessons on day one. The first lesson was if you have a good product, it sells itself. Great lesson. Second lesson was if the product is illegal, you'll probably get in trouble. So I got in trouble like two hours into selling lollipops. The only time I really ever got in trouble, got my lollipops confiscated, my own entire inventory. My mom whooped me that day because she was like, why are you selling illegal stuff at school? I was like, mom, but the lollipops, bro. Look at the profit margins, you know, um, but she was not having it. Um, so I learned that lesson. I think that my third lesson was, you know, have a backup plan. Because as soon as my lovely most were gone, that was the end of the business. Day one, I didn't, I didn't even make all my money back, you know. So um, I think it was in my blood to like find gaps, try to close them with, with the business. Um and then in, in high school, I, like when I moved to Canada, I did the same thing. We were living, living in boarding school. And the kids, you know, once it's 10, everyone's hungry, but the cafeteria is closed. So I went, I bought a box of noodles, Indomie noodles, and I, and I would sell them out of my room for a dollar each. And, you know, like I would sell out, I would make like 50, 100 bucks a week, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Like I was... Like you think about it, everyone's hungry. They know Toby's got noodles, right? Like, and so they come over with their little dollar, and I sell them a noodle. So that was, you know, in grade twelve. I mean, grade thirteen. I not grade thirteen. First year of university, I got onto the varsity soccer team, and I was the only international student that year to got get onto the varsity soccer team. Only Nigerian. So everyone starts asking me, like, oh, my God, how did you do it? Like, it's so hard. 175 people tried out. They only took 22 people and all this stuff. So I built a boot camp. It was like 200 bucks. I took all the exercises we were doing in varsity, started training people. I think I made like 1000 bucks. Like five people showed up. I was like, nice. And then next year, I flipped iPhones. I figured, like, when families upgrade, you know, they have these iPhones that they need to sell. They, if it's a family, they sell it for cheap just to pay off the contract. I buy it, negotiate it down 50, 100 bucks, sell it for 50, 100 bucks more, make 100 to 200 bucks a phone, put the easy, put couches at the end of the month. If you haven't sold your couch, you have to leave it on the curve. So I come in last day of the month, pick up some couches, sell them first day of the month. I can just find gaps and, you know, find ways to close them and make 100, 200 bucks, you know. So that was kind of where it started. It was just really a, a gap seller. <laughs>